Hi, and welcome back to another Save for Parts tech review. Today we've got something really cool to look at. So Top Don has sent me this TC001 thermal imaging camera. This plugs right into an Android phone and will let me see things in thermal infrared energy. As I say in all of my sponsored reviews like this one, I try to be very fair and honest with the products that people send me, and I want to make sure I'm very straightforward about what I think of this device. Alright, so here is our Top Don TC001 thermal camera. Comes in this nice little carrying case with some cables, manual, little lens cleaner cloth. So this is the actual thermal camera, and it's got a USB-C connection here so it can plug directly into the bottom of your phone. Unlike some of the standalone thermal cameras that you might find online, this uses your phone as the processing power and the screen, so the whole thermal camera is just this little sensor module. So infrared energy is just outside of visible light, or at least what's visible to a human. There are some animals like snakes that can detect infrared energy, and that helps them hunt at night and find warm-blooded prey. An infrared camera like this takes infrared energy, collects it in a lens much like a regular camera, and then converts the electrical signal into an image that we can see. If you've seen the movie Predator, this is what the alien is using to hunt Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now apparently you can also use it with a Windows computer. We've got this little adapter here, USB-C to desktop USB, so you can plug it into that. And the manual here is incredibly simple. There's almost no text on it. It's basically just pictograms of how to set this up. So we need to download the software for Windows or the app on Android. We get that installed, we plug in our sensor, and it looks like we're all ready to go. Very simple. Hardly even need instructions at all for this. Okay, this is a little challenging to film because I'm trying to line up the thermal camera and my camcorder and myself so you can see what this looks like. We've gotten this working right out of the box. We just had to download the app, plug in the camera, and we're thermal imaging right off the bat. I have to say the thermal imager quality on this is very good. I've used some standalone thermal cameras at work in the past that cost thousands of dollars, and honestly the quality on this top down unit is better than those. I've gone ahead and flipped around the Top Don camera, so we're looking forward now, and we're looking at our cat Donnie. So here is what Donnie looks like in infrared vision. Now one cool thing about this camera is it shows you spot temperatures. So right now I'm seeing the temperature of the center of the screen. I'm also seeing the highest and lowest temperatures in the image. And there are a couple settings we can change the temperature range to automatic, normal, or high. Now the frame rate on this camera is not as fast as, let's say, a cell phone camera or regular digital camera. It's probably something like 15 frames per second versus 30, so there is a very slight noticeable lag in the video quality. For looking at thermal stuff, that really doesn't matter. You're not trying to get a high-speed video with this thing. You just want to see what temperatures things are. So I'm just going through all the uh, random settings here. You can change the color palette, so we can change how our temperatures are displayed in the image. And that's kind of useful depending on what you're looking for, if you want only the highest temperatures to register, if you want all temperatures to register, just what looks better for your particular purposes. Now we can also take photos and video right from the app here. Now you notice uh, infrared behaves differently on glass than visible light, so I'm aiming this at the window and we're not seeing outside at all, we're just seeing heat reflections from things inside the room, such as me back here. So the infrared energy is bouncing off the glass, as it should if you've got a proper thermal pane window, while the visible light is coming right through. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon. So I'm just looking through other settings in the camera. We've got a detail slider bar. Our frame rate is definitely a little choppier, but we are seeing a little more detail now. We can also mess with the contrast. That's downright artistic right there. We can turn our color bar on and off, and we can do a visible light overlay, which is kind of cool. So here, you're seeing Donnie in regular visible light, and then you're seeing thermal Donnie over here. Donnie has gotten bored with this and left, but you can still see the heat signature from where he was sitting. You can even see where his tail was lying there on the blanket. 
personal information here in the main settings of the app and this is where you can change over to Fahrenheit. Now you can also change other stuff like temperature correction. It gives you this whole cheat sheet here of temperature correction for different materials. So wet soil, glass, skin, water surface, paper, wood. So if you know what material you're looking at and you want to get a more accurate temperature reading, you can go in here and mess around with the fine tuning of it. I can go through the full PDF manual right in the app. And if I'm too impatient to read the full manual, there's a frequently asked questions section on here too. So far we've messed around with the thermal imaging setting on here, and then a little bit with the personal information. Uh, gallery just gives us the gallery of images we've shot with the app's little built-in camera. Then there's also this temperature monitoring mode. Let's see what that does. So this could be useful for a scientific or industrial application. Let's say you've got your phone or your tablet or your computer set up looking at one particular area and you want to see how does the temperature in that area change over time. So we go over to generate image. We select what are we trying to monitor, a dot, a line, a plane. We're going to go ahead with a dot. We're going to select the area that we want to monitor. Let's just monitor right up there where I clicked. Start recording. So now, in addition to our thermal image, we have a little graph of the temperature at that dot over time. So if something warm moves in front of the sensor, our graph goes way up to the new temperature. If we go back to the colder region, the graph goes back down. I'm using this wrong. If I had this in a stable, standalone location without me moving the phone around, you could monitor an industrial device, you could monitor a motor, you could monitor an electrical circuit. Now I actually happen to have another thermal camera that I actually built. This is my little DIY Raspberry Pi quarter, which has a thermal imaging sensor on it. And the resolution on this is much, much lower than the top Don unit. But let's just look at them side by side for a quick comparison. So here's what Donnie looks like on our DIY homemade low resolution camera. Just kind of a vaguely cat shaped blob. Here's another image I took before with a standalone thermal camera that I borrowed. And again, here he is on the TC View camera. Really, there's no comparison. This is so much better. So far, we've proven that the Top Don TC View thermal camera is great for looking at cats, but what if you want to look at something else? Thermal cameras like this are great for detecting faults in electronic devices. You can stare at a computer or the guts of a device and see which components are overheating. You could also look at a circuit breaker panel and potentially see where is there more current or more heat going through. Another really good use for these are looking at the outside of your house to see where are there hot spots. And this could indicate a lack of insulation or an air leak or some other problem that's going to cost you money in your heating bill. This is also a good way to check out your appliances to make sure there aren't any heat or cold leaks. For example, here's our chest freezer. You can see it's leaking some cold right around the seal of the top hatch. And here's the water heater, which is pretty well insulated in the middle, but has some heat loss at the top and bottom. To show off another use of this camera, we took it outside to see what wildlife we could spot. And off in the distance there, you can see three warm blobs, which are actually deer in a field. If you've got animals in your yard at night and you want to see what they are without turning on a big light and disturbing them, you could pull out your thermal camera and identify what kind of critters you're looking at. So let's try out the Windows version of the Top Dawn software. And you'll have to excuse the cracked laptop screen. This wouldn't be the Save It For Parts channel if we had a good laptop. So it seems to have an issue working in full screen. It just kind of freezes a little bit, but it is working now. So we have not only our infrared view, but we have a temperature profile down at the bottom that shows our maximum and minimum temperatures being observed by the sensor. I should start doing Zoom meetings with this camera. I'm sure my work would love it if I called in in thermal mode instead of visible light. So just like the Android app, we can adjust some settings on this. We can switch our units over to Fahrenheit. We can mess around with uh, distance, emissivity, and we can change our color palette. So again, we can change the color display depending on what things we want to highlight or what we're looking for. And just like the app, we can choose different regions or lines to measure the temperature. And again, this would be useful for a circuit board or an industrial machine if we want to know the ongoing temperature of very specific areas. It just isn't as fully featured as the Android software, so if you want to get the most out of one of these, you need to have it plugged into a phone. So I said I'd be honest about any issues that I found with this thing. So far, I really haven't found too many problems with it. The only minor annoyance is that it's really designed for TikTok mode here, for vertical video. When you spin it on your side, you can go into the settings, and you can select rotate, but it, it just kind of rotates it smaller and off to the side. So 
it doesn't really ever give you a landscape mode. I don't know if that's just this phone and Android version I'm using or if it does this with every phone. Again, that's kind of a minor annoyance. You can still see the image perfectly well in landscape mode. It's just that all your temperature numbers are sideways. And of course it's perfectly usable in portrait mode, but I'm a little older, so I'm in the generation that likes their video this direction. Overall, I've been very happy with the Topdon TC View camera. It's really convenient, it's small, it's portable, it's got this nice little rugged case so you can just throw it in a pocket, bring it with you out camping, bring it to a job site, do all kinds of interesting stuff with it. You can see animals, you can see electrical stuff, you can see architectural stuff. It has a lot of interesting applications and it's much smaller, cheaper, and better quality than a lot of the other thermal cameras that I've had experience with. The one thing that would improve this would be a better landscape mode on the phone, but that's just a minor concern. I would say if you're new to thermal imaging and want to check it out, or if you're experienced with it and want something to use on the job site or for personal use, this is a great little product. I'll throw all the links to the sales page down in the description so you can check it out for yourself and maybe pick one up. I hope this has been a useful review for everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.